you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com. The Chris Voss Show. Dot com. Hey, we're coming here with the first of the year podcast. Podcast number one of 2021. <laughs> kind of feels like starting over, but not really. Um, just so you know, there's 700 other podcasts and God knows how many uh, beyond that. Uh, but let's just, we'll call it 700 for a while and then we'll move to 800. <laughs> Uh, but there's 700 podcasts on the Chris Voss Show. There's 300 available on iTunes, and they only let us do 300 at a time. So there's another 400. You can go to the ChrisVossShow.com and Google them all. If you're listening on some of our other affiliate channels on the CVPN, the Chris Voss Podcast Network, there's nine podcasts you can take and check out. There's the Book Author Podcast, which kind of just focuses on our book interviews. Uh, there's the Chris Voss Podcast, which is uh, kind of a carbon copy of a lot of the different interviews we do over here. But for some reason, people like to go on that channel, so I, whatever your thing is. Um, and then there's a whole mess of other ones. So uh, being as this is a new year, please go subscribe to the channels. Go to thecvpn.com, chrisvosspodcastnetwork.com. Go to YouTube dot com forward slash chris voss and subscribe let's set some new goals for the year to listen to the chris voss show and this episode is brought to you by ifi audio and their new neo idsd the neo is the new wave of digital sound listening for your desktop music gaming and bleeding edge bluetooth even mqa audio file decoding uh we're using it in the studio right now i've loved my experience with it so far it just makes everything sound so much more richer and better and takes things to the next level ifi audio is an award-winning audio tech company with one aim in mind to improve your music enjoyment of quality sound eradicate noise distortion and hiss from your listening experience Check out their new incredible lineup of DACs and audio enhancement devices at ifi-audio.com. We're going to have an exciting year for you. Uh, last year, we had an exciting half of the year. We changed the format of the show, opened up to uh, not just uh, business leaders and entrepreneurs and CEOs like we've always done with a lot of tech conversation. But we opened up to book authors, people, uh, news uh, journalists and, and other different things uh, really opened up the show and it exploded. I mean, I'm not even can you exploded in people listening to the show. Uh, and so we've really been thankful for that. Uh, I just got done right before this, and hopefully you caught some. We kind of ran the upload of four episodes all at once, and uh, sometimes the um, the downloaders don't work that well. But we, uh, I did a four-part series at the end of the year here uh, in 2020 where I basically recapped all the great books and authors we'd had on the show. And I actually went through all of those episodes and I gave backstories on them. So there's backstories on uh, some of the different, uh, you know, things we talked about maybe in the green room that I can discuss or after the show, uh, different my perceptions of some of the uh, guests that were on the show, um, some of the different experiences or fun conversations we had or maybe some anecdotes from the show. Basically, a lot of different anecdotes from the guests that were on the show. So if you were a guest, go back and listen to that and then have some fun. You might get to see what your opinion, my opinion was of you. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I loved everybody on the show last year. It was wonderful. Maybe one person I didn't like so much, but, uh, everyone else I loved on the show and had a great time. I was really honored to spend time with, I hope that they'll come again uh, the next time they all write books. But, uh, so basically I did four shows where we went through the plethora of all these great book authors that have been on the show and we, uh, just kick butt with uh with letting them um uh, letting them all uh, giving you all sort of some background stories and there were some fun stories as i went through a lot of them some fun memories that i have of some of the different things or uh some of the things i talk about in the shows was kind of how i approached um and set up for interviewing them and 
put that time and effort to uh, try and give them a good interview. So that's important. I hope a lot of people realize that there is a lot of thought, usually research and prep that goes into having most people on. And, uh, so, uh, so I gave some of that detail. So if you get a chance, go back and listen to them. It's a four part series. You'll see part one, two, three, four, um, where I recap all the, um, uh, book authors. And, uh, we just had an explosive amount of them on the show in the later half of the last half of the year. Um, I think this year, the way we're going to be going, man, I have to, may have to do a recap every quarter just to keep up and not get too far behind. But it was, it was a it was a fun little labor of love for the first uh, episode. Anyway, welcome to 2021, folks. Welcome, welcome. It's a brand new year. It's a brand new uh, baby, if you will. If you always see the the old man and the baby uh, for the transfer of the years between each other, um, hoping that this year is going to be better overall let's put it that way because uh i think we we've still got you know some ugliness of recession and and, uh covid to go through um hospitals filling people dying unfortunately and all that sad fact but hopefully we're going to come through it and come out the other side um we've got a incredible amount of guests that are coming up i'll give you a i'll give you um before we get into some stuff i want to get into today i'll give you uh some of the names that uh are really sticking out that you're going to hear this month and next month um these are the ones that are scheduled there's a whole mess that we're just waiting for them to pick their times um uh, I'll I'll pick uh, I'll pick one off the top here. Frank Fugluzzi, Fugluzzi, he is coming on the show. He's written his book, and let me reach behind me and grab this. Um, he's written an extraordinary book on the FBI way inside the Bureau's code of excellence. Former FBI assistant director, he was appointed by Robert Mueller. Um, you definitely want to check out this book. We're reading it right now. We've got the uh, uh, press proof uh, and a few other press proofs around here, actually. But I got to tell you, it's an excellent book. Uh, Leon Panetta, Robert De Niro, uh, Andrea Mitchell, uh, and Michael Steele have all, they're on the back cover as people who've written glowing recommendations for the book. Uh, definitely check it out. Frank Fuguzzi, The FBI Way. I see a lot of uh, really great stuff that he puts up on uh, MSNBC and, uh, just a brilliant guy. And I think the thing he talks about in the book, I, w- I won't tell you too much about the book yet. We'll get into some more of it later, but you know, he talks about you know, the ethics and values and the, the FBI way of fidelity, bravery, and integrity. And we've had a few FBI agents on the show. Um, we have even invited James Comey on the show, uh, for his book. I believe he has one coming out this month too. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, these, these guys are stand-up guys, man. They, they work really hard. They train really hard. I have a lot of respect for them. Um, and, uh, you can go back and see some of the interviews we've had with people. Uh, so anyway, uh, he will be on the show, I believe the 18th of January on Martin Luther King day. Um, we have a few other people that are pretty interesting too. We're expanding some of the format of the show too. We're going to be talking a lot about sound and audio. We're going to have some different speakers, people on, uh, different things about music, DAX, uh, MQA. You're going to hear me talking about that. Um, CES will also be coming up. We're going to have CES people on the show. Uh, I think mid month CES rolls out its whole CES thing and we're going to be talking about CES and the show and everything else. And yeah, it'll be pretty interesting to talk about what's going on with that. Um, Lee Goldberg of bone Canyon. I believe he, he's written several different books. will be on the show. Neha Gupta, uh, Mike bear. He's written a lot of books, Jason Pinter, uh, David Solomon will be on the show of Cobas, Co- uh, music service. So I've been recently experiencing that with the IFI IDSD audio you see in our ad commercial. And um, they, Cobas, uh, Co- uh, it takes and makes uh, basically a streaming service that it's not a streaming service. Uh, well, it is a streaming service. I'm getting that mixed up with Rune. But it provides a streaming service where you can get high-res music and really great, incredible details. So we'll get into some of that, how their service works and uh, everything else. Dave, Daniel Pine is being on the uh, show. Uh, Gavin Mueller. Tom Hartman. You may recognize that name. Uh, Andrew Maine. 
uh, and um, so we're just waiting for a lot of different other things to come in. But we'll be talking about uh, some different audio features and CES and everything else as well. So stay tuned. It will fill up uh, like it was last year and just be a crazy time. So anyway, guys, uh, New Year's resolutions. We do this every year where we talk about, um, I don't know, how should you approach the new year? What should you do? Should you make resolutions? What should you be thinking about? You know, we have this whole conversation every year if you go back on the show. And it's good to do because, you know, you're, you're kind of, well, when you get at my age, you're just like, it's another damn day. <laughs> um, it, you know, there is some aspect to uh, using it as a reset where you sit down and you go, okay, well, let's, let's kind of use this as a start over point where we where we set some goals or we set some resolutions or set some things that what you want to take and do. Um, you know, this year it's tough to say I've got resolutions because there's a lot of extraordinary things that may or may not happen this year. But that, that does give you uh, the presence of a lot of opportunity that can possibly happen. So um, that may be what you want to take and do. Approach the new year with uh, resolve to find opportunities. Uh, look for gems that are in every day so you can take and uh uh do stuff i would say uh make sure you learn whatever lessons you learn from 2020 uh that the people you love the people you care about uh, are the most important in your world and maybe with your goals or resolutions or maybe your plans that you spend more time with them um you know even once we get a vaccine and this thing gets over, we don't know. There could be more uh, variations of this uh, virus. There could be forks in it where you know it goes to a whole new strain. We don't know, man. I mean, if anything, what I think what 2020 taught us is we can't see the future. And the future is fragile. And the future is volatile. And the future is mortal. And uh, I think a lot of us, you know, I well, no one could. I mean, there are people that predicted it, but... I don't think no one saw this coming. Um, and so um, I would say sit down and figure out different aspects of your life and what you want to work on and uh, work on those. And don't really make them, maybe you don't want to make resolutions if you're a person who doesn't follow through on your resolutions, maybe don't do that. Um, maybe sit down and say, hey, where am I working in a few areas? Uh, what am I constantly thinking about or worrying about? Do I need to work on this or fix this? Uh, networking. Uh, am I reaching out? Do I have a good network of people? The one thing we learned from 2020 was having a good network of people, people you could talk to, people you could bounce ideas off with, people you could hug uh, from afar, people that could support you, um, people that uh, you could support them uh, became really important. Uh, and, uh, so networking is really good. Make sure you expand your horizons and your support sort of network, if you will, uh, because usually if you're helping other people, they're helping you and yada, yada, yada. Exercise is good. Uh, get exercise. You got to stay healthy. Certainly, um, if you're like me, you put on weight in the quarantine, you haven't exercised as much as you're supposed to. If you didn't, if you did exercise, cool, good for you. I'm really proud of you. Um, uh, of course, another aspect in our lives to take a look at is how we eat, what we're eating, how much of it we're eating is it good for us. <laughs> uh, so you may want to take and analyze that and decide, is this really, um, uh, what I want to be doing? There's some great authors that we had on the show and I'm trying to book some actually for this month, uh, that have some books coming out, um, on diet. And, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of diets, there's lots of attitudes and, and data and research about it. And so over the, you know, next year, we'll, we'll probably have some different authors on, on diet. And m for the most part, you know, the Chris Foss show is saying, this is the way we'll just be interviewing the authors of these books and they'll present their ideas. And, you know, it's up to you to decide what you want to take and do. But the great author that we had on twice, he actually really helped me. Uh, with his fasting book and his name escapes me at the moment that I don't have before me, but I think you'll know who it is. Uh, he's like real big faster dude. Um, he was on twice. He's got a cancer book that I believe comes out this month. If not, I think it comes out tomorrow. Um, called the cancer cure. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to think of what the other one is, but his is called The Cancer Cure, and the other book has a similar title. But check that out. So take a look at what we're reading. 
and what you're eating, not what I'm eating, because you don't want to see what I'm eating. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> but take a look at what you're eating and decide if you can eat healthier. Another thing you may want to take a look at in your goals and resolutions this year is work. What are you doing work? Are you happy at work? Uh, is it happy with you? <laughs> is your boss happy with you? Um, you know, a lot of us, our work styles change this year. Uh, a lot more people are working at home. I've actually had, talked to some of my friends and they're thinking about moving around because their work is giving them the opportunity to continue to work from home even after the pandemic. And, uh, so they're starting to make other life choices. Uh, they want to move some places that have cheaper homes. Uh, they want to, you know, get out of outside of busy urban high traffic areas and places where they can raise the kids and maybe have a little bit more quiet. Um, you know, take a look at your work too. Are you being fulfilled? Is this the work you want to do? Is it time to start a new business? Uh, for some of you who may have lost a job that may be, I mean, that may be an option. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of people on LinkedIn, sadly, uh, bums me out. Uh, where they're like, I've, I've spent, you know, I've sent, uh, 60 freaking resumes and spent six months trying to get a job. And that's really freaking hard. I, I can't imagine what that's like to work from that mindset, but I understand, you know, I understand why people do that and I, I can't shame people for that, but, but I gotta tell you, it's so much more freeing when you know how to create money, when you know how to create businesses, when you know how to make stuff work because you don't. You know, it's the old adage of teaching someone to fish. So uh, it may be that if you're in that situation, this is a good time to start a business or looking to start a business. And instead of, you know, spending all day gaming or <laughs> watching TV <laughs> or doing other things that maybe I might be guilty of, um, start a business. And if you don't know how, you've got plenty of time in your hands to do it in this quarantine. This is a great moment for changing your life. I've, you know, if you go back to the, what I was talking about in March about the opportunities that are available in a crisis like this, you can, rest they give you opportunities to restart your life, which is what I did. Uh, cause the recession had wiped everything. Another thing to take a look at is, um, what you're building in your life, whether it's your personal, your business, your relationships, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how are they building? Are they growing? Are they getting better? How are you approaching them? Uh, are you approaching them better? Um, this is probably an important thing to do at, at uh, realizing where you are at in life, where they're at in life, and, and are you really achieving what you want to achieve? It's a good chance to check in on that. Worrying. Maybe this is a good time to check in on what you're worrying about too much. I think we all worry. And uh, it's been shown that human beings... Uh, taken, uh, worry so much about things that don't matter and don't ever come true. And they waste all their time worrying when they should just be moving on with their life. So this might be a great time to look at the values of what you're worrying about. I remember years ago when I had way too much anxiety and ADHD and, and, um, uh, my psychiatrist that I went to, he said, uh, you're worrying about stuff like all the time. And I go, no, I'm not. He goes, well, you're, you're thinking about it. And I go, well, yeah, I kind of think about this and I think about that. And he goes, that sounds like worrying to me. <laughs> he goes, you're, you're afraid of, of failing at this side or the other. And you're focusing on it instead of focusing on maybe what you could do with other things. And you know, what? he's right. And what was funny was I was doing it to schedule like at 10 o'clock every day. I would think about one thing and 11 o'clock would be whatever the next one was. It's pretty fucking out there. Welcome to ADHD. Um, so take a look at what you're worrying about. <coughs> Excuse me. Reading. Uh, this is going to be a great year. We're going to have a lot of great authors on the show. We're going to have a lot of great books. And let me tell you, we just uh, we just took and got a bunch of books that we interviewed over the last six months, eight months, something like that. Uh, go back through the library of the Chris Foss Show. Pick out some books that you want to take and read. There's two that we recommended on our holiday list. Uh, Begin Again by uh, Eddie Glaude Jr. And then another one um, called Strong Men by Ruth. And, uh, and I, her name, last name escapes me. My apologies to Ruth. But we did recommend the book. Um, you can search for it on the Chris Voss Show. I think it's Ruth Bengate. Gate? Gate? 
Um, she has an interesting, unique last name, which makes her very important and special. Um, so uh, take and uh, check out those two books. Um, there were a ton, just a ton of great authors on the show. We were so blessed. And uh, so go through some of the books. Go through some of the old shows. Decide what you want to read. Maybe Google the best books that you're reading. I got to tell you, one book I'm reading right now is Cast. I had heard so much about it all year. In fact, we reached out to her to get her on the show. And by the time I got the emails and everything set out, she would already booked and was down the road. In fact, I think I was behind the eight ball on her book tour. Um, I really would have liked to get the author of Cast on the show. Hopefully, we'll get her in the future. But you've it, it's a really important book to read uh and learning about america other problems we have and we really have to fix a lot of this stuff so decide what books you want to take and read maybe you want to get some pre-orders of some of the books that we on uh, authors that we have coming up you'll see me announcing those shows as we go along uh and uh yeah there you go in fact i'll probably should get better at the beginning of the show mentioning who's coming up huh i should do a Look for so and so to be on the show tomorrow, blah blah blah. I really should do that. That uh, you know, got to do the whole Carson thing. Tune in tomorrow when we have Bob and Doug McKenzie. Um, anyway, you know, check out what you're reading. Um, being, check out who you're being. Like, who are you? What am I? What's my identity? Do I still need to keep this? Is this really who I am? What am I up to? Uh, it's a good time to sit down and figure out who you be. <laughs> Volunteering. Volunteering, I like this one. I like this one. I remember when uh, the pandemic first hit and everyone was going to quarantine, and my friend said something that was epic and gave me wisdom. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I got wisdom from it, but it helped me with some wisdom. <laughs> I gave the impression there that it made me wiser. My friend gave me wisdom. Now my brain is huge. That's not true. Uh, we've all seen that movie, um, but volunteering. So anyway, he said, uh, here's what you do right now. You either find a helper or you be a helper. It's important to be one of either. Don't get lost. Go find a helper or be a helper. Uh, being a volunteer offer to help people, you know, um, it, it, don't, don't look to always get paid for stuff or, or, well, this isn't worth my time or something. Look for people that you can help. One of the things I do in my life is I try and surround myself with good people. Uh, what's a good example I can use? I mean, you know, a good example I can use. Uh, a friend of mine has been working on a project that I've been seeing on Instagram, and I was like, I was like, man, you know, that you really should maybe hear some ideas. Um, and they were like, hey, I'll buy you coffee. And I was like, no, I, you don't have to buy me coffee. Just, you know, I'm here to help, and I collect good friends, and so hopefully that if I ever need a hand with, I don't know, a question or a thought or some sort of idea or maybe, uh, you know, whatever. Who knows? You know, you never know. This is what you do. You pay it forward in, in the universe and the universe hopefully will bring it back if you believe in that sort of thing. Um, and so volunteer, man. Offer to help people. Uh, just remember, a rising tide lifts all boats. If we all help each other out, if we all give a little bit, you know. Now, I'm not going to go work for people. That's a whole different thing. But try and uh, take a look at what you're volunteering for. Uh, are you helping other people? Maybe you need to help uh, the little old lady that in town. Um, I know my mom gets help um, from her neighbors. Uh, people, you know, sometimes they'll bring her garbage in. Sometimes they'll take her garbage out. Uh, sometimes they'll shovel her walks for her. Um, so I think it's beautiful and nice what people do. And, and sometimes think about it this way. Sometimes it's just those small things. Volunteering to help just sometimes just means calling somebody and say, Hey, how you doing, man? You okay? I'm here for you. If you need me, I'm mean, seriously, do you need a break from, I don't know, the kids or whatever the hell's going on in your life? Do you need a break? I mean, I got to tell you, ever since this quarantine started, <laughs> A lot of times my friends and we call each other and just go, hey, man, you you okay? You, you doing okay? <laughs> it's kind of our way of going, yeah, we're we're not sure we're doing okay, but if, maybe if you're doing okay and we can help you, uh, we'll, we'll be better for it. So check out what you're volunteering for. Uh, here's another topic to take and think about when you're making your news resolutions or planning your year. Relax. Take some time to breathe. 
Take some time to relax or schedule some time to relax if you need to. If you're one of those people, I, I must schedule everything. Schedule some time to relax. Have some peace. Uh, maybe you get one of those apps that you see on TV like Calm or something. I should probably pick them up as a sponsor. The Chris Voss Show is brought to you by Calm or not. Um, actually, if it was the Chris Voss Show and it was a sponsor like that, the sponsor would be like, and now the Chris Voss to you is bought by Scream at the Wall. <laughs> Rage at the Machine. Um, anyway, yeah, that's probably where that would go. Um, so schedule something to relax. Maybe find some ways to tune out. But one of the things I've been doing, and I've been playing with this uh, new toy. Where is that new toy? Um, it's a uh, portable. It's the Kana Alpha. And it's an MQA decoding double DAC, uh, a double DAC, uh, portable music player. And I guess it's still in my room. Um, anyway, I've been playing with it. It's a beautiful, if you see the review on it, it's just, a, just an immaculate piece of work. I think it's like $1,100, but it plays, you know, high res MQA decoding, everything else. And what I've been doing, and I recently made this change, and you'll see, hear me talking about it in the next couple of days. We're trying to get some of the vendors for this on the show. Um, but I recently went back into my music, and I, I updated all my huge music library to full digital uh, all the way up to high res or MQA. And I used a few different services to do that that we'll get into uh, on another podcast. So... I did that, and so now I'm just hearing this great music. I'm just loving it. And I've gotten this habit now of where when I'm going to bed, I I take the little portable player, and I guess it's in my room, uh, the Con Alpha. You can take and uh, uh, Google their website, Con Alpha. And I lay there with the headphones, my Bluetooth headphones, and I just soak in the sound. And I try and listen to some music before I go to bed. And you know what I found? Even if I'm listening to like rock and roll, but you know, usually I'll, for something like that, I'll listen to some nice jazz. Like last night, I think I was listening to Doors, L.A. Woman, the album L.A. Woman. And I, I was really soaking it in because I was experiencing the high res version for the first time. And there are tracks in there I never listened to. I mean, I think I listened to them, but I never like really listened to them. And so I was having a lot of fun with that, but. I've kind of been doing this weird thing ever since I got the Con Alpha where I go to bed and I'll lay there and I'll probably listen to, I don't know, a bunch of songs and I'll just kind of close my eyes and I'll just soak in the music and I'll just let it kind of wash over me. I'll just soak it in. Um, and uh, I've been finding that's really helping cool my shit out before I go to sleep. Because cause you listen to a few songs and then you're finally like, you know, I want to turn my head over and go to sleep. But I'll just lay there, close my eyes, and listen to the music. And uh, <laughs> that line always gets me. Whoa, listen to the music. <laughs> it's a Doobie Brothers there, that line. <laughs> Anytime I hear anybody say, listen to the music, I'm like, Doobie Brothers. And the song is now moving in my head. So schedule some relaxing time. Schedule some time out for your brain. Schedule some time out just to cuddle with somebody. Hug them. Spend time with them. You don't always have to be talking. You don't always have to be doing something. You know, I think one of the things we hopefully realize from the pandemic is you don't always have to be going somewhere, doing something, and and being something, and and experiencing something. Sometimes the best experiences are just holding somebody, being with somebody. And there's a lot of people, unfortunately, this year. And next, that won't get to spend those times with people. That there'll be an empty chair, and those are the moments you're going to miss the most. And so, I hope we learn that. So, spend some time to relax this year, if you will. Uh, love, love's an important aspect of our lives. Whether it's your relationships, uh, for me, it's my dogs, my two beautiful huskies. <laughs> I love the shit out of them, and, and I've always worked from home since 2004, but uh, even more now, I'm, uh, you know, I just, we try and spend more time every day with them. Um, I, I've realized a lot, that sometimes dad spends a little bit too much time maybe gaming or on his computer, doing podcasts, and and he doesn't spend enough time with the puppies. In fact, I had to start scheduling time where it's like, look, we need to spend at least 15 minutes a day 
go out, talk to the puppies, go throw the ball or whatever for them, you know, feed treats, have a, make sure that we have some quality time. So schedule some, uh, love time for your families. And you may want to do a, uh, an assessment of where you are with love, uh, and relationships and happiness in your life. And I just did a big whole write up on Facebook about them. The, um, the, the stupid way people do with text messaging and the dating and thirst traps and all this stupid crap that goes on online. And I, I wrote a post and I'm like, look, man, I, I see all these people. They just waste, wait, waste months, like fucking texting people and you know, whatever. And we kind of have to do it right now in COVID, but they waste months like texting all these girls and, and guys back and forth. So just ask her the fuck out. And if you're a woman, just ask him out. So assess where you are in your love thing and try and get in love or out of love and back into love or whatever your deal is, wherever you're going, whether you're coming or going on the whole relationship thing, or maybe assess your relationships and see if you're getting the love you need and what you need to achieve to get the love you need. Uh, maybe it's a good time to, you know, check that basket, see if it's full or if it's not full. And if you can't get it full, then maybe it's time to find somebody who can fill it. Um, I'm talking about love, of course, but I just realized in my brain that joke can go a couple different other ways, but, uh, fill it with love or whatever you call it. <laughs> live. The last one we're going to talk about today, live. And this one kind of touches me. Live your life get out and live if there's one thing you learn life is short the one thing that my friends always tell me about uh, israel is a lot of people they party they have a good time they love they live they uh, they enjoy life because they know that you know, life is volatile and they see it sometimes every day and what goes on in the middle east uh they know you can be blown up or stabbed or whatever sort of crazy shit can go on so they kind of have this thing where they they live their life. Um, this is really important for maybe we should sit down and go, how am I living my life? How am I enjoying it? How am I soaking it up? And this is something I've been doing. It's really been helping me with the depression, uh, getting my music library fixed. I'm working more now listening with my headphones and my Rune um, music library organizer archiver. Uh, there's another one I've been using too and testing out called audio. Uh, Adi Novrana, I think it is. Adi, Adi, Adi Um Anyway, we'll get some details on you for that. But take a look, and there's some good, hopefully, some good things. Um, it would to to maybe base that on and what you want to take and do. Some people do vision boards. Um, I don't know about all that. You know, the thing is, is is make your goals uh, something that you can attain, right? Maybe you're going to something you can attain, like putting a vision board that you want to get a, uh, like, you know, you're, you're out of work right now and you want to get a fucking Lamborghini by the end of the year. That's to me, that's just not appropriate. It makes no fucking sense. Um, you know, it, you know, maybe that you want to get a car, that you want to get a job, stick with the simple things that are important because it's about those basic elements. So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. So hopefully I gave you guys some inspiring thoughts and different ideas to take and go after. I want to wish all of you uh, that listen to the show a happy new year. And uh, I hope all of us have a healthy, 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 you can have a healthy one too, healthy new year and uh hugs out to you thanks for always supporting the show thanks for being there in the last year thanks to all the guests that we had this last year and uh here's to a better year we're gonna have to keep our thing up because i think uh the you's coming anyway if you this is a great time for us to reset go back and listen to those all those great authors we have on the show order up their books read their books learn all sorts of cool stuff, listen to the recent four episodes we did, go to youtube.com, subscribe over there. The Chris Voss Show has uh, a bunch of Facebook groups and then the facebook.com forward slash Chris Voss. There's goodreads.com forward slash Chris Voss. There's uh, a huge 135,000 group on LinkedIn and uh, several accounts on LinkedIn and groups uh, you can search for over there. Take and do that. And uh, I think next week we're going to be on a new app uh, as well. Um, called Clubhouse, I believe 
We have a phone coming in, and so we can put us on Clubhouse. You have to have an iPhone. Uh, and we'll probably be doing some more podcast stuff over there, or doing segments over there that we'll bring to the main show. So if you're on Clubhouse, check that out as well once we get on there. I think Monday or Tuesday we'll be on. And then what else is there? There is, uh, yeah, I think it's all of it. Check it out. Follow us everywhere. Tell everyone uh, you love the show. Share the show with your friends. Grab their phone. Say, you need to subscribe to the Chris Voss Show right now. Make them do it. You'll make their lives better. See, that's part of the volunteering and helping. Anyway, guys, certainly appreciate you guys. Love you all. Let's have a happy new year. Look forward to seeing you all throughout it. And at the end of this year, be blessed.